Hello. Welcome on back to my channel, guys. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Spencer, and with me today, I have a model by the name of Lakin, whom I've never worked with before. She's LA-based, she's stunning, and when we were trying to decide what kind of makeup look that we should create for her, we were drawing blank, so I said, heck, let's just throw up a pink backdrop and let's roll the dice and see what happens. With that said, we came up with this look right here, so if you wanna learn how I created this bold plum eye look paired with a nude pink lip, then keep on watching. To start out, I'm using the Infusion de Rose Mask from Laura Mercier. If you've been keeping tabs on my videos, you know how much I love this product to prep the skin, especially with Lakin. She has beautiful skin, but there was a little bit of dry texture along the chin from a facial treatment, I believe she told me. If you're experiencing any of that dry, flaky skin, and if you have time in your makeup routine to leave this mask on for a good 15 minutes and then follow up with an exfoliator, it'll help tremendously with your makeup application going on smoother. For foundation, I'm using the Smashbox 24 Hour Foundation in the shade 2.15. And along with all the other products I'll be using today, I'll include everything down below in the description box for you. But I really enjoy using this foundation for a couple of reasons. First being that it is full coverage and it doesn't take a lot of product to get you there. This isn't a foundation that takes two or three or eight layers to give you that full coverage effect, which is nice because who wants to feel like their skin is being weighed down from all this product? But with this specific foundation, a quarter size amount will be plenty to cover your complete face and even enough to bring down the neck and chest. To contour, I'm using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick in the shade Y505. This has to be one of my go-to cream contour products for the last couple of years now. And I hate to sound like I'm talking up every product I'm using so far. I swear I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, nor have I taken any sponsorships since starting my channel. And if I do in the future, I won't hide it. I don't play those games, I'll tell you. But these are sincerely just products I enjoy using. And with this specific one, I find myself using in this shade the most and it looks beautiful on many different skin tones as a contour. If you feel more comfortable using powders to contour, go for it. I've always just preferred using creams because in my opinion, they blend easier and there's more playtime with them. That's until you set them with powders. So if I'm not liking how something is looking, I can use my beauty blender as an eraser. Whereas with powders, it's a little trickier to take away anything once it's been applied. And as you can probably tell, I'm not applying a lot of this product onto our model. I'm trying to keep the skin looking simple and fresh since I know I'll be making the eyes a bit bolder and that's where I want most of the attention drawn to. I'm also bringing out this blend down below the jawline, down the neck and behind the ears, just so everything matches seamlessly. Nothing is worse than walking out in broad daylight and your face is a completely different color than your neck. And take it from me, someone who's made that mistake maybe once or twice, it's the worst and it looks so tacky. Okay, so now that we have the contour applied and blended, it's time to start moving on to the next step, which is to conceal and brighten the under eyes. To do so, I'm using the Makeup Forever HD Concealer in shade Y21, and I'm applying this in that triangle area underneath the eyes. With this, you see I'm not going in real heavy with it either. I'm kind of going in with it uh, with a more minimalistic approach, let's say. <laughs> this is another great concealer I've used for some time now. I wouldn't say it's in my top five favorites, but it, it, it's up there somewhere. Is it the most full coverage concealer? No, but it looks beautiful on camera and in person. And I'm not even needing a super high coverage concealer with our model anyways. Sometimes with my experience, the more full coverage a concealer is, the thicker it is. And the thicker it is, the more prone it is to crease throughout the day. So if I can avoid that, then I'll stick with a thinner formula, such as the one I'm using here from Makeup Forever. Once we have that blended out, I'm taking my translucent setting powder from Anastasia Beverly Hills to set everything. I'm beginning with the under eyes by blending out any of the creasing that we may have already, and then I press that translucent powder in with my powder puff. I then start taking it outwards to set the face. What I did here with the powder was I poured some of it into the palm of my hand, pressed my powder puff into it, and then really worked that powder into the puff. <laughs> I don't know if any of that just made sense, but basically this just gives the most even application and prevents there from being product unevenly dispersed. 
Once I've applied that powder up, down, and all around, I can apply my bronzer. To bronze, I'm going in with the NYX Cosmetics Highlight and Contour Pro Palette, and pretty much what I'm doing is I'm mixing together the four bottom shades, and with a light hand, I'm applying this to the same area as we had applied the cream and contour. I've had this palette forever now, and I never used it, so I figured I'd give it a try, and frankly, I'm glad I did because I really enjoyed this palette for the contour shades. The top four shades to highlight, not my cup of tea, but I'll definitely be using this again for the bottom four. And then for the eyelids here, I'm just setting them with that translucent powder. To begin the eye look, I'm using a lip liner from CoverGirl in the shade Plum Partner, and I'm laying this product down starting from the lash line and working my way upwards. I know, I know, it's not the most conventional way to do your eye makeup, but I've always loved using lip pencils and even lipsticks as a base. In this situation, I couldn't find a deep plum eyeshadow for the life of me, so I resorted to using this pencil I found, and I'm applying it the same way I would apply an eye pencil or an eyeshadow cream stick. Then I'm taking a flat blending brush to start blending that product upwards and outwards. This is a step you're really gonna wanna take your time on because once this lip pencil is on there, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's this deep Merlot color, so it's saturated with pigment. So be patient with it. Then you'll see me here in a moment take a clean eyeshadow blending brush to really diffuse the edges. Once you have that blended out to your liking, it should look a little something like this. With that same lip pencil, I'm running it along the bottom lash line. Now, while I'm all for trying out a lip liner or lipstick on your lids and lash line, I definitely wouldn't recommend using it in your waterline. Something about that really doesn't seem safe or even comfortable, but if you've tried it, let me know how that went for you. For me though, I'll be using a black gel liner later on in this video for the waterline. And with another flat blending brush, I'm just blending that liner downwards. For eyeshadow, I'm using the B4 shade in the Norvina palette volume one from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm going over where we had applied the liner on the bottom lash line. This cool toned purple will really complement the warmer plum shade liner we had used. And to be safe, I end up placing a bit of that translucent powder underneath the eyes in case of there being any fallout. I'm then using that same eyeshadow shade on the top lid and crease. You guys, to be real, this is where things start to get a little shaky for me. I forgot a major step, and that's to apply a thin layer of translucent powder on top of the liner before going in with an eyeshadow. Because if you don't set the cream liner, whatever pigment eyeshadow you put on top of it is going to skip and look patchy, which is what ended up happening, especially the left eye. <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks crazy. But um, I did end up trying to fix it towards the end of the video. But moving on, as you saw, I applied the black gel liner, the lashes off camera, and now I'm using the Benefit Clear Brow Gel to slick up her brow hairs. Then with this Run Wild Palette by BH Cosmetics, I'm applying the Flaunted Blush Shade, starting from the apples of the cheeks and working my way upwards. And because I wanted to sharpen the contour, I used the same translucent powder from Anastasia Beverly Hills to bake the jawline. And with a Perversion Mascara from Urban Decay, I'm running this product through the top and bottom lashes. For those of you who are wondering which lashes I used on her earlier, they are Lily Lashes in the style Tease. Next, I'm brushing off the translucent powder that we had left to bake for just a few minutes. To highlight, I'm using these two shades from the BH Cosmetics Aurora Eyeshadow Palette, and I'm applying this on the high points of the cheekbones, down the center of the nose, and the cupid's bow. I also had ended up using the same palette on her eyelids earlier, which is why you may have noticed that the eyelids have a little shimmer on them. For the lips, I'm beginning with Laura Mercier's lipstick in shade Rose Claire to line the lips. I love this nude shade of lipstick. It's that really mauve rose toned nude. It looks really beautiful as is or paired with a sheer lip gloss. For the center of the lips, I'm using Urban Decay's lipstick in shade Heartless. This lighter shade pink will bring back a little dimension to the lips and will complement the plum tones we use for the eyes. And to pull this whole lip look together, I'm using the lip glass from MAC to add tons of shine. You guys already know I love a good glossy lip. One of these days, I promise, I'll do a matte lip. But until then, gloss all the way. And finally, for the last step, I'm using Huda Beauty's brand new hydrating mist called Glow Cocoa to add some glow back to the skin. 
And that's how we turn this natural beauty into a glam goddess. have it kids i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you want to see more videos like this then be sure to give this one a big old thumbs up and subscribe down below also you can check out more of my work on my instagram at painted by spencer and until then i'll see you next time